everybody, and welcome! This is uh, your friendly neighborhood engineer, Mike Botta, coming to you live from Natec Plastics. And today we're here to talk a little bit about design for injection molding, and more specifically, design for ejection which is a critical and often overlooked aspect of part design for injection molding. What you expect to get after a, a part is well designed for ejection specifically is you hope to get a, uh, a higher piece quality output from the, from the, uh, from the mold as well as uh, a lower level of risk which is what everyone wants to chase after, right? So uh, we have a, a, current, a current customer who is uh, or who was working with Protoplace to develop their original mold design. Uh, they came to us with parts that had generally low quality and uh, had, uh, I guess, higher levels of perceived risk. So, and also they were paying an exorbitant piece price, as you normally would at a proto place. So what we did was we came to them with a couple of ideas. We identified three main areas of risk as we saw it in their part design and proposed uh, solutions to these potential problems. So number one is the polish. As you can see from the part, the original part had a sort of a hazy, cloudy look to it, which is caused by a very low level of polish. So on our optimized version of this part, we decided to add a very, very fine, high quality finish, which was an SPI A series finish onto the entirety of the part surfaces. Now what this does is it creates not only a part that ejects better from the tool, but also gives the appearance that a diagnostics device should give. It's very clean and very professional and very well done. The second area that we decided to focus on uh, was the, the method in which we removed the part from the tool. So in the existing design, you can sort of see that there are knockout pin marks on the internal faces of the part, which in this case is actually a critical sealing face of the, of the component. Uh, this produces uh, a bit of a, of, a, uh, of a leak path risk in the assembled components. So what we decided to do is we sort of threw the idea of knockout pins uh, off to the side and decided to instead use what's called uh, stripper ejection in which the forming faces of the tool are sort of split into one fixed and one movable portion and that sort of keeps a nice uh, fluid removal of the part and makes a nice high quality surface finish on the inside of the part. This also removes uh, the potential for leak path in the assembled component. Lastly, we saw an area of the part on the A side of the tool uh, that had a very low uh, degree of draft and had a high chance of uh, getting stuck in the tool. This creates line stoppages and creates a higher piece price because of those stoppages and, and potential rejects. So we decided to uh, instead increase the draft in those areas um, in order to make sure that we get the part out of the tool properly. Now this created an issue where the legs, there were four legs in the bottom of the part, these legs got very, very thin at the extremities uh, which led to now a potential of having a non-fill issue in those areas. So here we are, we're addressing one area of risk and we now have a new risk that we've created. So instead we sort of created a bit of a compromise where we kept uh, the, the increased level of draft but created sort of like fill channel ribs up the centers of those legs which eliminated this new created risk of non-fill. The result from this was that, uh, yeah, the parts ejected very well from the tool. We do not get stuck in the A side of the tool. The client has a very high level of quality output and pays a much lower piece price than what they pay or paid previously with Protoplace. Uh, so that's it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for tuning in. And until next time, uh, stay nerdy.